Rosacea is a condition I commonly see in clinic. So in this video, we're going to talk about what is rosacea, how to best treat it, and I'm going to offer some of my skincare tips for those of you who suffer from rosacea. Hi, my name is Dr. Jen Yu Liu. I'm a board-certified dermatologist in Minneapolis, and welcome to my YouTube channel. So what is rosacea? Rosacea is a chronic and inflammatory skin condition, often characterized by skin sensitivity along with a tendency to flush, look rosy and red, and also may develop pimple-like bumps, especially along the central face. So the cheeks, the nose, the chin, and the forehead. And that is a very big definition of rosacea because we know that rosacea have various different presentations. In fact, we even used to categorize rosacea into four subtypes. We still do for more academic purposes, but for when we are seeing a patient in clinic, we don't use those subcategories to really treat the patient. We treat based on the clinical findings and the symptoms because we know for most individuals with rosacea, they'll often have kind of a collection of various different subtypes. Number one is called erythromatal telangiectatic and that is the redness, the flushing that we often see like the cheeks, the nose, the chin. And sometimes it can be very severe and large broken visible blood vessels can be present. Sometimes that redness often will flare with certain triggers and those triggers are different for everyone but common things would be heat, wind, cold, spicy food, stress, chocolate, caffeine, so all the good stuff. Subtype 2 is papular pustular rosacea so this is more the kind of what they used to call adult acne even though it's not truly acne but often gets misdiagnosed or mistaken for acne will present it as these pink zit or pimple like bumps and sometimes even pustules often on the nose, the cheeks, and the chin. The third time is called phimatis, and this has to do with chronic inflammation and overgrowth of your oil glands, essentially. Often will present as more of like a bulbous skin, bulbous nose, and that's called rhinophyma with uneven surface and texture with dilated, pore-like appearance. But that phimatis change can also be seen of the forehead as well as the chin. And lastly, the fourth subtype of rosacea is ocular rosacea. And yes, you can definitely get rosacea in your eyes. Often these patients will have like a dry and gritty like sensation, gritting the sensation in the eye. Sometimes the eyelid margins can get crusty, they can get styes, and the whiteness of their eye can look more red and injected. As I mentioned earlier, most individuals will have a spectrum of these conditions and will be having the type 1 and type 2, so the flushing, the redness, along with pimples being the most common presentation that we see. So why does rosacea happen? You know, unfortunately, we are still trying to lucidate the pathogenesis of rosacea, so we don't completely understand it. However, we do know that it is very common, affects 60 million Americans, and we often see it in like in the late 20s and 30s, not so much in our kids and teenagers. It tends to present in adulthood. Now, genetics do play a role in rosacea, and we tend to see this um, running in families. As far as what is happening underneath the skin, we do know that there are certain things that we see in rosacea patients that we don't see in individuals who don't have rosacea. So number one, there is a defective skin barrier and that could be a reason why often rosacea patients will complain that their skin is more sensitive either to products or to the environmental triggers. There is increase in transepidermal water loss. So the inability of the skin to hold on to water and tends to be more dry, flaky, and dehydrated. We also know that there is actually a decreased amount of lipid production of the stratum corneum in rosacea patients. Similar, there tends to be a an immunogenic, so pro-inflammatory response for some reason. And the inflammation will generate a cascade of reactions leading to production of enzymes that will generate inflammation, but also can degrade collagen. And we think that inflammation in part is what's responsible for the redness and those pimples that we see in rosacea patients. Furthermore, there is what we call a neurogenic dysregulation. So hypersensitivity along with, again, that clinical presentation that we see of being more sensitive to certain triggers. And last Lastly, there tends to be a hyper reaction to an organism that lives in the oil glands. So there is a mite called demodex mite that we see in 6% of the normal healthy population. There are these little bugs that you can actually even scrape out of the skin and put on a slide. In the clinic, sometimes we'll do this and you can see 
see these little raleigh little critters and it's like i can't believe this just came out of my skin but in rosacea patients we found that there tends to be a higher density but not only is it the presence of these mites but we think in abnormal response to these mites is what is associated with the more papular and pustular variant of rosacea now as mentioned earlier there can be common triggers for individuals with rosacea but one of the biggest risk factors is ultraviolet radiation we know that uv radiation is pro-inflammatory damages dna generates inflammatory response reactive oxygen cbcs and also upregulates all these inflammatory cytokines that already are pre-existing in rosacea patients but will often make that worse which is why it is super important to be doing thorough and diligent sun protection on a regular basis furthermore we know that in individuals who are more red and have dilated and broken blood vessels the sun often will make that worse so how we treat rosacea really depends on the presentation so if it's redness often lasers avoiding triggers certain prescription topicals can be helpful at temporarily reducing the amount of redness and obviously camouflaging is helpful when it comes to the papules or the pustules acne like bumps often prescription topicals and sometimes even oral medications are necessary for really severe cases as i mentioned earlier oral antibiotics and sometimes even oral retinoids are used for severe cases but those overgrowth of sebaceous glands laser and certain type of procedures can be helpful next i'm going to offer some tips for general skincare and some of my personal favorite skincare products that I recommend for my rosacea patients. The most important thing is if you do have rosacea is to see your dermatologist because like I said, often prescription medications are really gonna be helpful to help your rosacea get under control. But nevertheless, proper skincare is still gonna be really, really important important and really the foundation is always you want to test out any products before using them and when it comes to skincare gentle is the way to go and less is more i recommend just a good gentle cleanser once or twice a day from cerave their hydrating cleanser vanna cream facial cleanser is another really good one just find one that is going to be effective but not overstrip your skin's natural oil. Now, moisturizers are really gonna be the key at helping to hydrate, moisturize, prevent transepidermal water loss, and really help to repair your skin barrier. One of my favorite products is the one from Cetaphil, their Redness Relief Night Moisturizer. This is very calming and soothing. It contains ceramides, niacinamide, and shea butter. And it's just a really good moisturizer. And this is one of you that I have found that when my skin is like, say, recovering from my chemical peel and tends to be more sensitive, it will not burn and has never burned my skin. Similarly, another one that I personally love and use all the time is the Tularing Ultra Moisturizing Cream from La Roche-Posay. This is a thicker moisturizer, contains glycerin, thermal spring water, shea butter, and then neurosensate, which is a peptide that they've actually done clinical studies on using this product on rosacea patients and has been found to have an anti-inflammatory and calming effects. So this is one that I I also really love. One more moisturizer that I like, especially to spot trace certain really irritated areas is the Aven Sickle Fate Restorative Cream. And this is uh, zinc based. Zinc is really helpful for repairing skin. It's used a lot in wound healing. This is definitely kind of more white and pasty, thick enough to even use on chap lips if you need. Again, something that can be really helpful, soothing to the skin, pretty thick. So probably would use as needed to spot treat. Definitely can use it all over your face, but I find that to be a too to a little bit too sick and heavy and occlusive. And for those who want a lighter moisturizer either to use in the morning or if you have more oily skin, the two that I've always recommended to my patients are one from CeraVe, their PM facial moisturizer. This is great. I mean, it says PM, but it's lightweight, it's oil-free, great to use under sunscreen in the morning. And in fact, I do that sometimes, as well as the La Roche-Posay Tularian double facial moisturizer. Both of these are really helpful. They're both oil-free, fast-absorbing, both contain ceramides and nice cinnamide that's going to be helping to repair skin barrier and soothing so it's really just like a toss-up i honestly love both and kind of will rotate through both of them kind of just depending on my mood now one last product that i have really been liking when my skin is just super sensitive is using an overnight sleeping mask one that i found to be really soothing and calming is the one from skin fix the redness relief overnight sleeping mask and this contains honey peptides and other calming ingredients and you wear it like a sleeping mask so you would wear it over your moisture moisturizer and you will sleep in that. It really helps to hydrate the skin, repair the skin barrier, and it's just very soothing and it, really, it feels really good.
but when you put it on your skin and it's kind of formulated for those with more sensitive red and rosacea prone skin so i would love to know if you've tried this please comment below and let me know what you think now i cannot finish off a rosacea video without talking and stressing the importance of wearing sunscreen i've talked about various types of my favorite sunscreens in my previous video and i will link some of my favorites that i think are well suited for rosacea prone skin down below in the description box but sunscreen is one of those you no know, products that the best one is the one that you like enough that works well for your skin that you will remember and want to wear on a daily basis in general rosacea patients tend to tolerate mineral-based sunscreen a little bit better just because often with this chemical sunscreen it can be more, more irritating and can burn but i have found a handful of my rosacea patients including my skin that tends to be sensitive can tolerate certain types of chemical sunscreens it really all depends on the formulation and here is where you do have to try you want to make sure you're putting on enough most people under apply so at least a teaspoon for your head and neck reapply it throughout the day and this is really important because we do know that ultraviolet radiation come through windows and most of us because we under apply and your sunscreen gets rubbed off throughout the day that is going to make a huge difference when it comes to protecting your skin so really make sure that you are reapplying and using the proper amount so those are some of my favorite skincare recommendations i hope you guys found this video helpful and let me know if you have rosacea if you have tried any of these products that i've recommended i would love to hear what you think about them similarly if you have a holy girl product that i did not mention today comment below because i would love to try them out myself and hopefully recommend them to my patients as well if you enjoy watching this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Again, you can follow me on my various social media accounts. Until next time, thanks for watching.